a passionate instigator and dynamic problem solver. Dr. Kevin Ross Emery, the host of the Dr. Kevin Radio Show, will be taking you outside the box, behind the curtain, and identifying the load of BS we are fed every day. And now, Dr. Kevin. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome to the Dr. Kevin Show here on Ohm Time. Well, it's the first Thursday of October. We're 10 months into the year. And as we always do on the first Thursday of the month, we are talking politics with none other than Matt Connerton from Matt Connerton Unleashed, 95.3 WMNF, WMNH. I just, I just changed you from an H to an F. <laughs> what's the F? Now, um, what's with the F? <laughs> Anyways, uh, oh my. you can catch Matt 4 to 6, Monday through Friday. Uh, and if you are not in the Manchester, New Hampshire listening area for his drive type show, you can go to mattconnerton.com or ipmnation.com and listen to it anyways and be part of the conversation. And in fact, talking about being part of the conversation, if you want to be a part of this conversation, you may do so by calling in at 202-570-7057. That's 202-570-7057. And share your thoughts, your ideas, ask your questions. We only ask that you be respectful. That is a requirement if you're going to interact with Matthew and I today, is be respectful. So we are in... And we're having a lovely, in New England, we're having a lovely Indian summer day in the 70s at the beginning of October. What do you think of that, Matt? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, I guess it's not going to last. I think uh, this weekend it's supposed to uh, get get uh, more uh, more seasonable. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, beautiful day today. And we're looking at the same tomorrow. You know, that's what these little, this, this little, summer days that show up in the middle of fall. They've had these, I mean, I don't look at this as climate change because I've had these since I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is just a pretty typical New England thing to have a kind of a little Indian summer. I always kind of look at it as summer kind of going, miss me yet. (laughs) Right. You get a long wait and then leaves. Right. Just want to slap summer right upside the head. Like, (laughs) come back. So anyways, so how are you these days? Ah, uh, good. I'm a little uh little little run down. I just uh I, I I just had my um my uh bivalent I think is the term, uh the uh updated uh booster and uh the the one side effect I tend to get and it that lasts about a day and a half it seems is uh I get uh a bit uh a bit fatigued in the evening, so so doing the best I can to, to stay awake, but, uh, yeah, but, but it's worth it. You know, I'd much rather, uh, deal with, uh, some, uh, lethargy and, uh, fatigue than, uh, get COVID. So I'm not complaining, but, uh, yeah, I'm all right. And I got my flu shot at the same time. So, you know, just to get it done, oh. you know, aren't you just double trouble? Yeah. I, yes, yes. I have to admit, I have not ever been a big flu vaccine person. I don't think I've ever had a flu vaccine. No? Ever, ever, unless I had it as a little kid and I don't remember it. As an adult, I would always kind of, because, you know, I'm into all of that woo-woo intuitive stuff. Yeah. Um, I always kind of get, I get quiet and I go, do I need to get a flu shot? I always get, no, I never do. I mean, I got three rounds of the COVID vaccine. I was really clear. I mean, when I got quiet, it was like, yep, need to do this. Went and did it. Did I didn't get into all of the like head crappy. Oh, you know, you're being in, you know, you're having alien genes put into you so you can be monitored from the planet Polarides or something that some of the people out there were saying. I don't know. They were saying some really silly shit as far as I was concerned. But it's like, nope, need to get it. Yep, need to get it. Flu, never get a yes. Never had one. Huh. Uh, <laughs> never had the flu either, really. I mean, I've had, I've had like two or three days of like little flu buggy stuff, but never uh, seriously. 
So well, so well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, my track record is good. No flu shot. No really. No real flu. So you can't beat that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, your 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 luck may run out. I mean, I hope not. But well, when I when I go if 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 I move into doing this next COVID uh, vaccine booster, which I have not, have not decided yes or no. I got to get quiet yeah. and decide it like I decide everything. I'll ask yeah. about the flu shot like I always ask about the flu shot. And if I get no, I'm not going to. And if I if I got a yes, I would do it. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I mean, in, I, I, you know, I'm in, in integrity with my woo woo shit. Yeah. You know, when I I may not like it when I get a yes. I'm not really thrilled about people sticking things in my arms. <laughs> so. <laughs> um. I so I've got another I've got another question for you. Mm-hmm. Um, before we get into the politics of the world, have you ever done jury duty? Um, no, I I well yes, but I didn't get picked. I got called once, and I I didn't get. It was a long time ago, and but I didn't get picked for the jury, and uh, that was it. Now, was it at the county level or the state level? Honestly, I don't even remember, and that's how long ago it was. This was like, uh, geez, this must have been, wow, like 25 years ago. Yeah, it was that long. It was the mid-90s. Yeah, so I don't even remember, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, if it was state, you would have gone to Concord, and if it was county, you would have stayed in Manchester, so... But it was been, de- it was know. definitely uh, it was definitely in Concord. Then you did the state. Okay. So, I was called for jury duty. Oh. And I had to go this last Monday, and you know I found it very interesting. You know, I mean it's tough, and. I get the whole jury, I get the whole, you know, like do jury duty. And on the other hand, you know, like there was a two, I, you know, I didn't get chosen for either one of the trials. I got to go back on the 17th. You got to go twice. I, you know, I didn't get chosen Mm -hmm. for the first one. And then I got accepted out for the second one. Um, but, but I'm sitting here going, I'm self-employed. I, I will have, you know, and I know not all employees, employers cover it, but some do a lot do. larger employers will cover your jury duty, um, or may do some combination of covering it totally or allowing you to take some of your days. But yeah. if I cancel a week of clients, I've canceled my paycheck for the week. I'm like, I, I I can't I can't afford to cancel a paycheck for a week, you know. Right. I'm self-employed, <laughs> so I kind of struggled with that a little bit. I'm just being very honest with you here on air. I just, I was like, you know, if you say I got to be on this thing, this jury for the next two days, I have to go cancel eight hours, eight ten. I think in the next two days, I had like ten hours of clients that I was going to have to move around, cancel, lose. I was like, if you have to serve jury duty, I think that the government should figure out the way to compensate you for it. Nobody should have to have a financial hardship for doing jury duty. I agree. I agree. Absolutely. You know, if, if, if you're going to ask me to do my civil duty, you need to do your civil duty back to me. Yes. Which, which is to compensate me not for me to make money, but for me not to lose money. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. No, I completely agree. So I don't know what's going to happen. I've got one more time to go to. I have to say the judge was very compassionate because there was a personal reason that was very honest and very emotional why I didn't feel like I could fairly serve on the second jury. 
And I went up and I told her and she was like, yep, you go right now. Go, leave. You're, we're done. Bye. I mean, not, nicely, nicely. Very compassionate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I have to say that I was very, you know, I was very impressed. But I'm not sure if they look at what I filled out and they and they talk to me. I'm not sure they'd pick me anyways, because when they asked me what I did, I wrote down psychic. I mean, what oh. lawyer wants a psychic on the jury? <laughs> right. Really? Oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's 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 true. Yeah, that's a good point. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting if that's what what gets you out of it. <laughs> well, you know, um, I've always been pretty upfront about you know my my own like past and my trials and tribulations. You've heard me. You and I go back. God, I don't even know how far back we go anymore. Um, but I never mind sharing, you know, my stumbles or the places I failed or the things that have happened to me. If I feel like they are a good teaching tool or lesson or are going to help somebody. Right? right. Best way to move through adversity and get on the other side is to have the adversity make meaning in your life. And adversity makes meaning if you can use it to help other people. I mean, mm-hmm. that's how I look at it. Makes sense? It does, absolutely. So and, and if you and if you learn from it too, of course, you know, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, well I I kind of well, you know, I was gonna say I was kind of assuming that you had to learn from it for it to be a teacher for somebody else, but that's actually not true. <laughs> right. Somebody Sometimes you can see somebody do something and go through it and learn from it and go, that was really stupid. And the other person still doesn't get it. So yeah, you're right. Oh, you're sure. <laughs> oh, that's a big part of learning in life is, is watching other people, you know, other people stumble and, and not figure it out, you know, and then, and then you say, well, I don't want to make the mistake they made, <laughs> whether they learn from it or not. So it uh so I watched this guy walk in, Matt, and my psychic vibes, I immediately was I don't know what the crime is, I don't know what he's accused of, I don't know anything. What I can tell you is he's guilty. Like I could I could just psych like you know, my intuitive was like he's guilty. And which in of itself is a problem because so like we want you to base this on the facts. Well, my intuitive is a fact for me. Uh, yeah, I, you know, it is how I make my living. I mean, it's 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 underneath all the stuff I do. I do a lot of stuff in my practice, but my intuitive is always there. Mm-hmm. It's part of it. I was like, and then I got this distinct feeling, like he was guilty of a lot more than he was being charged with. Oh, and that really creeped me out. So I'm sitting there with all of these other people. I mean, there was over a hundred people in the room and I'm sitting there and I'm, I kind of creeped about it. Yeah. It's like, uh, I'm like, okay, maybe they just won't call my name. <laughs> then they say what he is charged with. And what he's charged with is something I have been a personal victim of my, uh, of myself in my past. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, I'm trying to remember because I didn't get picked for the jury. I don't know anything about it. So I don't know. I know there's this whole thing of you have to be in good standing as a, as a, as an, as a person of the court and you can't talk about a trial, but that's if you're a jury a juror and I'm not a juror, I got excused. So I, yeah. I don't think there's, I'm, I'm trying to be semi delicate here. I don't want to, I don't want the man to come and put handcuffs on me. Right. <laughs> of course. But, it was a it was a crime that I was a victim of in my past, and we'll just say that the crime was violent. Mm-hmm. And I I started having a little PTSD. Oh wow! You know, I mean, like I was I, it just, and I don't know if it was because I psychically sensed he was guilty that I psychically sensed it was because he had had even worse things he had done that he wasn't being charged with 
that it, what it was hit way too close to something from my past, which doesn't really bother me, but I also am not going face to face to somebody who's doing it to somebody else. Right. You know, and, and being in a position potentially to decide, I mean, like how freaked out I would have got if I'd sat on that jury and somebody said, yeah, I have a doubt. So he's going to go away. I'm not sure I wouldn't have lost it. Right. That makes sense. You know, so when they list, read the list of questions and said, if you have a yes for any of these and your name is called, you have to go up to the judge and tell the judge yes. And so they called my name. I was like, oh, shit. I go <laughs> up. I am in front of the judge. And I go and, and you're allowed to lower your mask. And I mm-hmm. realize tears are rolling down my face. I'm shaking like a leaf. And I said, and I, and I told I, all I, all I said was that I was that kind of survivor. Yeah. And, and she looked and she said, you know, you don't need to stay. You're dismissed from the case. You know, like she, and again, she was very, very compassionate. Good, good. But, but I was just like, whoa, now I got to go back on the 17th and do it all over again to see if I get picked for a case. And, you know, I have to say, hopefully, I don't because it would be a financial hardship for me to be tied up for a week or two without doing clients. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I'm like, are you paying my bills? Can I send my bill collector to the court? Cause yeah. they're not going to take jury duty as a way for me to miss my monthly payment. Um, you know, but the system, the system isn't, the system doesn't work correctly. No. So that's why I was wondering if you did any jury duty. So the other thing is, you know, you can't wear flip-flops, T-shirts, shorts, uh, which I don't get. I get that you can't wear, like, stuff that has that got, like, slogans or, like, is, is, you know, like, you can't wear a MAGA hat to court. Yeah. Um, you know, you, and, and I get that. I get why you, why you can't wear, like, political statements to court where you can't wear, you know, inflammatory things to court, but I'm going, you know, and the the air system had broken down and the courtroom was like really hot and sweltering and I'm there in long pants and I'm thinking, why can't I be in here in t-shirt and shorts? Who is saying that's inappropriate? And what right do you have me, if you're coming to me and asking me as a favor as an American citizen, to sit in this jury, do you really have the right to say that you think my shorts are inappropriate? Right. What century are we living in? Yeah. (laughs) We will be right back, and Matt's going to tell us what are all the fun and exciting political things going Mm. on in the world when we get back here on The Dr. Kevin Show. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going Om? My passion is sifting through information, research and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4pm Pacific Time, 7pm Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on.
You came across someone struggling with hunger. How would you recognize them? Would you notice an eight-year-old girl who's, who's not, not excited, excited for, for summer, summer break because she may not be having lunch again until September? Or a war veteran who's, who's having, having a hard, hard time landing, landing a job and getting back on his feet? I am the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. I, I am, am hunger, hunger in, in America. America. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show. I'm on this week with Matt Connerton from Matt Connerton Unleashed. Um, and uh, we were just talking about jury duty. And Matt, I have one last thing to say, and then I'm going to uh, find out what you've been talking about this week on the last, the last month, really, since we've talked on the Matt mm. Connerton Show, kind of Unleashed. So I'll just tell you, for any reason, these days, I get called, I would ever get called to make an appearance before the Supreme Court, you can bet I am going to call, I'm going to wear a Ruth Ginsburg Bader t-shirt and a hat that says impeach Thomas uh, <laughs> when I show up. Uh, yeah. Just so you know. Anyways, that being said, <laughs> what's been the hot topics on your show over the last month that stand out that, you want to share with the listeners here at the Dr. Kevin show? Well, you know, a lot of it's taken up by, uh, uh, the war in Ukraine. And of course, uh, Trump's, uh, ongoing legal problems. And, but there was a positive story too. Well, actually regarding Biden, there was both a positive and a negative story today that the negative story, uh, being that, um, there's uh word is leaked out that, uh, in Delaware, the attorney general has enough uh, evidence to charge uh, Hunter Biden with uh, tax crimes. And, of course, there's been an ongoing uh, Department of Justice uh, investigation into into Hunter Biden uh, that uh, may have taken a turn. Um, but uh, on, uh, on a more positive note, uh, I was very. Uh, I was very uh, excited uh, today to see, and this came out of nowhere. I, I was not expecting this. Uh, President Biden announcing a federal pardon of uh, roughly uh, 6,500 uh, people in, uh, currently serving in federal prison for uh, uh, possession and use of cannabis. Um, and uh, Biden is uh, pardoning those people and is urging uh, governors because you know, when I, when I first heard that number, 6,500, I was like, that, that can't be it. That's, that's how many people. I know there's more people than that in federal prison for, for simple possession. But, um, but actually, most people who are in prison for simple possession were convicted at the state level. So Biden is uh, urging uh, governors around the country to do the same. Uh, to pardon those people in their states. And, uh, and, and uh, he also... Uh, wants a review of, uh, you know, cannabis is considered uh, Schedule One, uh, putting it in the same classification as uh, as heroin, uh, for example. The federal government uh, has it uh, categorized as Schedule One, whereas uh, Schedule Two, which is considered less harmful, has things like uh, fentanyl and methamphetamine. So, so that that's absurd. Uh, that uh, cannabis should be Schedule One. Uh, it should be descheduled entirely, in my view. Um, schedule One also means that it has no known uh, medical uh, use or benefit, which, of course, is uh, we all know is uh, not correct. So, uh, but this is a this is a positive first uh, step. Um, I'd like to see, you know, the the criminal records of these. I, I would like to see. Uh, the cannabis convictions, you know, not only these people pardoned, but these offenses should be expunged uh, from their criminal records. And I hope that happens as well. But uh, but this is great. And it's a surprise, too, because Biden historically has not been very good on this issue. And I speak as someone who I mean, in the broader sense, I oppose the drug war, uh, but also specifically, I certainly oppose the, uh, you know, the the, the uh, prohibition and of, of, uh, of cannabis. And, 
I don't even like to call it marijuana. I use the term cannabis, which is the correct term. Marijuana is a slang term, but, you know, it sounds exotic, which is why they started using it when they decided to start calling it. I think in the 1930s when they decided to start calling it marijuana, because if you make something sound exotic, it sounds scary. Like, ooh, <laughs> you know, xenophobia is such an effective marketing tool. Um, so, uh, so I prefer to call it cannabis, but Biden historically, I mean, I think it was part of that crime bill in the nineties, you know, they were, you know, there was the potential of actually giving the death penalty to drug dealers and, uh, you know, and even in the 2020 campaign, he was, he was, um, he was very, uh, uh, uneven and, um, inconsistent on the issue, you know, at one point saying, you know, he didn't think people should be serving prison terms for simple possession, but at another point saying that there needed to be more research on the subject, which, of course, is absurd. Uh, more research on what? You know, so um, so that was a very positive step. So we spent some time on the show today on that. So that was a that was a positive thing. Yeah, I saw that. I agree with pretty much everything you said. I think what's going to be interesting is, you know, what state governors will probably hop on board because you can tell by the faint blue light around them and you know which ones are probably not going to hop on board. You can tell by the fact that their background looks like they're on the seventh level of hell. It's so red. Um, And the sad part is they really should be in the seventh level of hell when they're that red. just a well, we, opinion. Yeah. Well, you might be surprised. Um, there, there may be some Republican governors that, that, that go for this, because if you look at polling data, you know, obviously libertarians have always uh, supported uh, full legalization. Uh, Democrats, uh, for a very long time, a majority have supported uh, legalization. But also in recent years, a majority of Republicans have supported legalization of cannabis. Um, you know, here in New Hampshire, for example, I mean, we're, you know, even though we're in the live, live for your die state, we still haven't gotten to legalization. We're still stuck on decrim, which is, you know, a good, a good step decriminalization. But, um, but we got that because enough Republicans voted with Democrats to decriminalize when that happened. And, and actually enough Republicans vote for legalization that we should have it fully legal in New Hampshire. Um, we have a lot of Republicans here who support it, but our governor, uh, Chris Sununu, a Republican, has said that he'll never he'll never sign a bill legalizing cannabis. So he opposes it. But I think a majority of New Hampshire Republicans are for it. So I think there are states where you could where you have Republican governors where you could see this, particularly Republican governors in blue states. Because they're going to be looking at, you know, I I always say on my show, you know who the most popular politicians in America are? It's Republican governors in blue states. They tend to have very high approval ratings, you know, because they they kind of uh, govern more from the center. They're not super conservative because they can't be. They're in a blue state. But they um, and they kind of, uh, you know, they they really not not out of any kind of altruism or or a desire to necessarily be a great leader, but but out of, I think, their own political survival, they really do have to kind of do what the electorate wants them to do uh, to keep getting uh, elected. So they I, I think I think some of these Republican governors, I mean, you know, uh, like uh, Larry Hogan in Delaware, he's being term limited out. But, you know, Charlie Baker in Massachusetts, actually, I don't think he's running again either. But anyway, I'm just giving examples of you know, states where I think Republican governors might go for this. Yeah, which is why, you know, I'm only talking about the go- the governors who look like they're in the seventh level of hell because they're so bright red. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> not all of them. Uh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I don't, I wonder what, I wonder what the stick is up, up the new news backsides is around cannabis uh, because he tends to be more of a centrist in a lot of other ways. Yeah, I've never understood it. It's very frustrating. I don't know what the yeah. reason is. But we've had that problem with um, governors, uh, previous governors, too, Democrats. Maggie Hassan, when she was governor of New Hampshire, you know, she's a Democrat. And she's, you know, 
she she's very very pro drug war to this day she loves the drug war she seems to revel in, in seeing people go to prison for cannabis john lynch a democrat <clears throat> when he was governor he even opposed medical cannabis and um and and, and his, his his wife is a doctor he should know better but so I don't know. It's something, it's a weird dynamic here in New Hampshire. Again, we're the live free or die state. We're surrounded by places where cannabis is legal. Uh, all, you know, we border all of our border states and Canada. Cannabis is legal, but uh, we just can't seem to get there. And I mean, it will happen. It is inevitable, but it should have, it's embarrassing uh, that it hasn't happened yet. Yep. Well, we will see. Now, one of the things that's come up since we've last talked is Liz Cheney made a statement that if Trump is the de facto, uh, which is, I think, starting to look like it's less likely going to happen, but we can get to that conversation afterwards. But if he Ooh. is the nominee, that she's leaving the Republican Party. What do you think? Where would she go? The Democrats aren't going to want her. Or, or is she going to be part of this new party that's trying to lure the the centrists from both the Republicans and the Democrats, saying uh, we need to stop having this like crazy left and crazy right? What are your thoughts? Yeah, this new party's not going anywhere. I think we talked about it last time, and I've already forgotten about. Uh, I, I don't even remember what it's called now. Something forward or something. I've already forgotten about it. Um, and I love third parties, so yeah, I don't think that's going anywhere. Yeah, I don't know what Liz Cheney's going to do. I don't know if she's going to uh, challenge uh, Trump uh, for the Republican nomination, and then if Trump is the nominee, I don't know if she runs as an independent and tries to draw votes from Trump to try to keep Biden in, because even though she and Joe Biden probably don't agree on much of anything, uh, she'd rather have uh, a Democrat than uh, someone who would uh, stage a coup and and an insurrection to remain in power. So um, I don't really know what's in her future. But yeah, she did say that. If, If Trump is a nominee, then she won't be a Republican anymore. Yep. So, but I don't know. Well, this this party that has Yang is the only name I ever remember that Yang is in the party, this new party. And they haven't really I haven't really heard much about them. But um, I mean, I've read a few things and there's a few other people they've dragged. But the question is, if if Trump ended up somehow securing that and keeping Abbott and DeSantos squashed, though DeSantis has his own nightmares that he's getting ready to face, I think. Um, the uh, could, could, could Cheney draw enough votes to make sure that Trump never got elected? Do you think that that would actually be a feasible outplay? Would, would Republicans who says, I just can't vote Democrat, would they line up behind Cheney because they just they can't also stomach Trump because that number is growing. You do know that, right? Not yeah, fast, may- but it is growing. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I mean, there's also the risk she might actually draw some votes from Biden because there might be some Republicans who, especially in in uh, like like a state like Georgia, where you know Republicans did really well in Georgia, except at the top, right? Uh, Biden was able to pull it off at the top. Um, do some of those Republicans who voted for Biden in 2020, who kind of held their nose and voted for a Democrat because they were so uh, disgusted with Trump, will they then vote for Cheney instead of voting for Biden? So, so that that can backfire. She might she might unwittingly draw some votes from Biden. So it's a risky strategy. Well said. So did you, so I'm going to shift for a second to the Ukraine, Mm -hmm. who seems to uh, somehow looks like they're almost getting Russia, Russia on the run. And I saw something today, which was, I don't know how many, but they, I, think, I believe it said the headline, it was, I saw it just before I came on air, 
but thousands of Russian men have come over the Bering Strait looking for, um, uh, the word's leaving me, but looking for asylum in Alaska. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? Oh, I didn't know that. No, really? Yeah. The oh, I had no idea. Thousands of men who don't want to get drafted in the Ukraine war have crossed the Bering Strait and asked for asylum in Alaska. Oh, I'll be damned. Well, I hope I hope we uh I hope we grant it to them. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they're going to Kazakhstan. I'm not pronouncing it right. You'll correct me. Kazakhstan. Um, Kazakhstan. They've been they've been running there. I mean, it's bleeding eligible men out of Russia right now. If we're to believe the story, so what are your thoughts on yep. all of that? And is Putin going to be the engineer of his own demise? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, when you say they've had the Russians on the run. I mean, literally, th there's been instances where the Russians are. Um, I saw one story about Russians actually stealing Ukrainian cars because maybe their tanks weren't working and, and driving away, trying to get away from from the Ukrainian military. It's it's remarkable. I mean, to, to the point of being almost comical, were it not such a serious situation, um, it's so embarrassing for for Russia. Um, and it's all great to see. Uh, it's it's great to see the Ukrainians doing so well and. The Russians being embarrassed and and uh, the the only you know the only problem is of course uh, Russia is the largest nuclear power in the world and they more nukes than anybody and and we don't want uh, Putin to uh, feel so cornered and trapped that he takes that step but I, I I'd like to see a coup in Russia maybe somebody takes out Putin um, then 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 of course you have the risk does somebody take out Putin who's actually more ruthless and will go ahead and use nukes. But I suspect whoever uh, took out Putin would be someone who wanted to do something a little more logical than what Putin has done. But Putin obviously thought this whole thing was going to be easy. You know, roll the tanks in, take the country, 72 hours later, roll the tanks out. Ukraine's part of Russia, you know, Mother Russia, and that's it. And, jeez, uh, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it'll be a year in February, and... I, I my, my suspicion is this war is just going to drag on. I think it's just going to drag on for years. I think this, there's a stalemate if we're not there already. But um, that's great. I mean, so I you know, you gotta go you gotta love the Ukrainian people and and really respect them. You know. So I got a clarification. Tens of thousands of Russians. So I will give this clarification when we come back for our last segment, <laughs> and then we're going to move on to a couple of other conversations. The Real Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Vox Novus, the new voice. Vox Novus, the new dimension. Vox Novus, thought and movement leaders who will share from their experience and offer tools to help us navigate our rapidly changing world. My name is Victor Furman. Join me every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio for Vox Novus, the new voice. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a mile, mile in, in my, my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes.
Hello, 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 and welcome back to the last segment of the Dr. Kevin Show. We were talking about men running from Russia. Uh, so, t- so the clarification I wanted to put is because it's actually only two men that showed up on a remote island that's Alaska that's looking, though they say roughly 30,000 Russians have fled to the U.S. and been taken yes. into custody and tens of thousands of Russians have fled to other countries as well. But the way they squished it when I first saw it, I thought that, that, uh, that the 30,000 all, the, like, like there was thousands that went to Alaska. It's only two men so far. I just don't uh, think it's funny, but 30,000 yeah. have come to the U.S. to oh, yeah. uh, escape. So I, I didn't want that incorrect thing out there. So... How damaging is SCOTUS going to be this term? Oh, I don't know. Uh, (laughs) I do know that uh, uh, Trump's uh, attorneys, I haven't seen an update on this today. I know Trump's attorneys approached uh, Clarence Thomas about, uh, oh, what was it? Um, I'm losing my train of thought a little bit. The vaccine's really... uh, uh, messing with me here. Um, but uh, I know that uh, Trump's attorneys approached Clarence Thomas about trying to put a stop to uh, the special master uh, sifting through those documents. But I, I do think uh, Thomas should recuse himself from anything related to January 6th. Um, but I don't know. I don't know uh, how much more damage uh, the Supreme Court can do. They've they've already done so much. <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to even predict. Well, you know, they're talking about going after the laws protecting the right to contraception. They're talking about going mm-hmm. after gay marriage. Um, well, Justice and, Thomas talked about Justice Thomas talked about that in his uh, his uh, uh, decision uh, his uh, uh, on uh, on Roe v. Wade. Yeah, he referred to it. I don't think any of the other justices have referred to that. I, I don't think the, I don't think they want to do that. I certainly don't think that uh, Chief Justice John Roberts wants to do that, but but uh, but Clarence Thomas, sure, I, he not not interracial marriage, of course, but uh, but the other things, uh, yes, he he does seem to have expressed an interest in revisiting those. Yep. Well, Ginny went and did her and pleaded her fifth multiple times in front of mm-hmm. the the. Uh, Congressional, and you know, and I get all about the Fifth Amendment, but boy, there is something aggravating. I mean, I, I've lost count of how many times the name, the 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 Fifth Amendment. I mean, I know exactly how many times Hillary claimed the Fifth over the Benghazi scandal. That number sticks in my head. I'm sure you remember it as well. Zero. Zero. Yes. 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 She answered all the questions. Yes. And the Trump family have between them, and I'm sure going into the future, everything around Trump has had so many Fifth Amendments pleaded that I think they're going to just change it, the name of it, to the Trump Amendment. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But is he closer to getting slapped with things. What do you think? Um, Ken Garland let this go. Georgia says it's doing its, 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 its indictments right after election. It won't do them before, but she said shortly right after election day, the indictments are going out. What do you think? Well, Trump has managed to mold uh things uh in a way where he's um or mold the Republican Party I should say in a way where uh you know whatever whatever bad happens he he uses it to his advantage. So for example the the search of Mar a Lago by the FBI, uh the only reason we found out about that when we did was because of Trump. You know, they tried to keep they tried to be quiet about it out of deference and and he went on his ironically named Truth Social and blasted the FBI. 
um, and, and and that draws attention and and helps raise money, and uh, and the grift goes on. You know, he's he's able to to uh, take all of this, and uh, it it doesn't matter how bad things uh, get for him in a way, because I mean, talk about uh, making lemons into lemonade. Uh, you know, he 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 just uh, you know something happens, and he tells everybody, you know, look there, it's the inclusivity. Uh, he, he's a master at that. You know, he says, well, look, they're not just after me. They're after all of us. They're after our movement. And he, and he raises more money. So um, whatever, whatever bad things come his way, he just uses it to enhance the grift. Now, obviously, if at some point he's criminally charged with something, um, you know, then the shit hits the fan. But but until then, he's able to just use all of this to his advantage. And other Republicans are, are using that same model. Um, Herschel Walker in Georgia, uh, of course, uh, running for Senate, uh, challenging uh, Pastor Raphael Warnock. Uh, Herschel Walker, it, it's come to light that he may have uh, allegedly uh, paid for an abortion, you know, even though he's so pro-life. There's uh, evidence, and and his own son came out against him and talked about what a hip- hypocrite his father is. And, and Herschel Walker goes out and says, well, look, this is just the Democrats trying to smear me, but it's, they're not just after me. They're after all of us. And see, and that works. He sees Trump do that, so he does it, and it works. All of a sudden, uh, instead of people running away from Herschel Walker, his um, – although actually the governor, uh, Brian Kemp in Georgia, did seem to kind of – uh, walk away from Herschel Walker a little bit. But as far as the money, his donations immediately went up, went up exponentially, because that's that's the new model in, in the Republican Party. Whatever, uh, you know, uh, whatever bad happens, to, it's actually good. It's it's like it's like there literally is no such thing as bad publicity anymore. You know, that's an old expression, but, uh, you know, and there's always been some qualifiers to that and some exceptions, but now it's coming true for the Republican Party. Anything bad, any kind of bad press, they just say, well, they're not just after me. They're after all of us. And then they raise more money. Um, so, uh, you know, so it doesn't, it, you know, until Trump is criminally charged with something, all these bad things are actually good for him. They help him continue to raise money. So... The so where are you standing right now? Because we're going to be we'll be having the first show in November just before election, where oh, I will yes. give you an opportunity to weigh in again. Um, but what's going to flip, and what's not going to flip in the midterm election? Well, I think the I think the Republicans will take the House, but uh, Democrats will uh, keep the Senate. Um, I just uh, when you asked me that question, I instinctively pulled up five thirty eight dot com, Nate Silver's uh, site. Although I'm not sure he's actually with five five thirty eight anymore. But um, this is a great site for predictions and statistics, and um, they are predicting. And by the way, for anyone looking for it online, it's 538 spelled out. It's, if you just go to 538.com, you won't find it, but it's 538 spelled out. Um, 66 in 100 chance Democrats uh, win in the Senate, 34 in 100 Republicans. So that looks good for the Democrats. But in the House, it's 70 in 100 chance Republicans uh, win control, uh, only 30 in 100 Democrats. So yeah, the Republicans will probably uh, win the um, win the uh, the House, um, you know, and that's that's typical of what happens in midterm elections. Whichever party holds the White House, uh, the opposing party makes gains in Congress. Um, Republicans might have had a shot at winning both the House and the Senate, but at this point, it looks like it's just going to be the House. Um, I think uh, they've they've uh, got some poor candidates for Senate, like uh, Herschel Walker in Georgia or um, uh, Dr. Oz Dr. in Pennsylvania. Um, yes, the the state that he doesn't actually live in. Um, yes. So I, I think uh, 
What's that? A puppy killer. You know, he killed all those puppies, dog, doggy. He killed all those animals and experiments that he was in charge of. Oh, oh I don't know about that's that. Been, oh, yeah, that's a big thing that came out in the last week and a half or so. Oh, I missed that. He, his, his lab that he was running something, but he was the person that was responsible for it and the decisions. And I don't know how long ago this was. It was definitely a few years ago, but I think the number was 339 or 399 of animals that were actually cruelly killed, including a bunch of dogs and puppies and stuff like that to see like how much shock response they would have to something he was testing, how much pain they'd be in. So oh my God. he like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's been, it's, it's been all over. Of course, Fetterman's having a field day with it because he's really good at having a field day with anything. Yeah. Uh, Oh, I missed that. I completely missed that. Wow. Okay. So, uh, well, yeah, that's not going to help us. <laughs> uh, no, no, not at all. Uh, Mitch McConnell stayed quiet about his his wife, Elaine, uh, China-loving Elaine Cho Cho Chow. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think McConnell likes to uh, just kind of ignore Trump as much as possible. I think McConnell just wants Trump to go away. And I think he thinks if he ignore him, if he ignores him, maybe he will, <laughs> you know? Mm. Oh. oh God. <laughs> so, well, MTG is the sex orgy queen with the divorcing husband. Are we going to have to put up with her in another round? Or do you think that uh, the fact that she, doesn't show up for debates and is never in her home state and now has been exposed as, uh, you know, this, uh, with, with, and, and her husband has said that the marriage, uh, the divorce documents are, are not to be sealed. So they're available for public consumption. So he's really yeah. out to screw her. Yeah. You think maybe that would be one loud mouth we might get rid of, rid of? Are we got looking at a new commentator for Fox. I don't know. I mean, they knew back. she was, uh, they, they, they knew who they was when they elected her. You know what I mean? I mean, when she ran the first time, she was pretty openly uh, uh, favorable to QAnon. Uh, so she's never hidden her crazy to begin with. So it's almost like, I don't know if any of it matters. Um, I And I don't remember who she's running against. So I don't know if the candidate she's against, well, well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know if it'll matter. I'd, crazy's not that easy to get rid of because once a crazy person is in there, you already knew they were crazy when you voted for them. So to then have an epiphany and say, oh, she's crazy. We got to get rid of her. I don't see it. I, I think she sticks around. Ugh. God. Yeah. Please say we can use duct tape and a dog muzzle. Um, anything else that's been st- standing out for you that's been going on or any stories that you think have more importance than they've been getting credit for? You're good about ferreting out things that kind of come up and go down and uh, don't always get the recognition they should in the news cycle. Yeah, I feel like there's some things. Um, I'm a little, like I said, with the my recent vaccination, it's it's making – my my ability to focus, I don't know if you can tell, is a little not not quite there. You know, something we did talk about on the show recently that didn't get a ton of coverage was um, uh, Biden during a, a segment on 60 Minutes, uh, just sort of <laughs> just sort of casually saying the pandemic is over. Um, we did uh, th- that was a point of discussion on the show uh, for a bit uh, because. Uh, you know, the CDC doesn't say that. Nobody else seems to be really saying that. But he just sort of, I don't know if you saw that. He just said, oh, yeah, the pandemic's over. And, you know, and I, I don't necessarily have a problem with him saying that. But I wish if he's going to say that, I wish he would say something more like, well, the pandemic phase is over, but we still have to be vigilant and careful and get people vaccinated because we don't want it to return to being a pandemic um, and we, uh, and this is still a public health, uh, emergency, uh, that we need to, um, 
you know, that we need to be uh, very uh, diligent about. But instead, he just kind of casually said, no, but yeah, the, the pandemic's over and uh, you don't see anybody wearing a mask. And, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of all set, I guess. And it was just it was a little odd to me. And I've been very um, I've given given him a lot of praise on the handling of the pandemic and, and uh, when, when the vaccines were uh, initially distributed and whatnot. But um, but he's had some stumbles on messaging, as he often tends to have. And uh, I thought that was weird. Um, uh, it, it's not how I would have liked to have seen that handled. You know, just a casual comment. Oh, yeah, the pandemic's over. It's like, what? <laughs> Do you think there's going to be ramifications for Santos with the Martha's Vineyard thing? Are, are oh, any of these yeah. lawsuits or people going after him going to get anything? I hope so. I hope so. What he did was wrong. Uh, that was a big, uh, big, that, that led to a big argument on my show one day, actually. But uh, no, I think he'll skate by. This hurricane is actually good for him because he's doing well with the, the aftermath of the hurricane, which I think will actually help him. And, might even make people forget about the Martha's Vineyard thing. We'll see. Okay. Well, we'll talk to you in a week, which will be five days before election, and see what's changed. Thanks, All right, Matt. Dr. Kevin. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Go feel better. <laughs>